let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Love, the crown of eternal life. Everlasting God will deliver to the entire world. By the Holy Spirit of truth, leader, Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, 1 First Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 to 16. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves, a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the mystery of godliness. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Second lesson, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 7 to 9. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing knowing that ye are there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Golden text, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 3 to 8. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, seeketh, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, Believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Introductory Spiritual Quarrels What would I do in order to cross the sea? If you want to cross the sea, love everyone if you want to cross the sea. Love God that you may have life. Love Jesus that you may have life. Quote, brethren, the above texts and choruses summarizes this gospel. 
re-examine the first lesson again. First lesson, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 to 16. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to be heir thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Frankly speaking, what are your programs in life? The probable contents of your programs in life include educational achievement, marriage, possession of cars, children, possession of knowledge, power, good health, beauty, and good food. Such is the outlay of your program. An illustration on the vanity in life. There was there once lived a man who owned a portion of land. The man hired workers to clear that portion of land and cut down some trees in the process. The man after that initial work promised to hire more men to hewn the big trees. As the man and his laborers departed that day, the trees lamented over the situation and their fate and decide to consult death for assistance. On their arrival at the residence of death, they narrated the story to him and sought for his immediate assistance. Their host, death, asked the trees whether the man had mentioned his name in the course of their discussion on that land. They all said he did not. Death told the trees that if the man had promised to return to the land to work the following day, if he, Death, would permit, he would have, consent, he would have consented to the man's plans, but that in so far as the man had not sought his death's consent, the tree should not be bothered. He told them to go home, assuring them of his protection. That night, just before dawn, the man passed away. Both not in love. Both only in love. That is the error I have come to correct. The whole world of men and women that make pride in money, that take pride in money, in educational attainment, in power, in children, in beauty, in social status, and the rest of the mundane things. Who has his pride in love? Your ambition is to give your child sound education up to the university level. What does such a child do after the university education other than chat, oppress people, and mass wealth, and amass wealth for himself? The first motive for going to school, whether for the parents or children, is to fulfill selfish ambitions. Nobody has love as one of the contents 
of his program in life. Women derive their pride in getting married to a handsome and rich man, having beautiful and intelligent children, and so forth. The question is, do they possess love? Men boast of their academic achievement and of their being governor, president, or other political and economic attainments. Do any of them have love? Is there any whose ambition is to love one another? I challenge that if there exists such a person, the one should come over for a prize. The downfall of the world I have here highlighted. No man takes love seriously, whether it is the government, the church, or couples. None has love as an item in their programs. This explains the source of the problems plaguing the whole world. Brethren, you have overlooked a lot of things. The scripture has told us that it was the woman that was deceived by the serpent, not the man. A promise was, however, made that the woman would be saved through childbirth. Moreover, both have to abide in peace, in love, in godliness, in faith and reverence to God. Whether you have 40 children and all of them are university graduates and well placed in society is immaterial in the kingdom of God. Even if you should beget Jesus Christ as Mary did, it will avail you nothing if you are without charity. Even though your preoccupation is God, you will gain nothing if you are devoid of love. Love, therefore, is the passport into the kingdom of God from now henceforth. Let love be the only item on your agenda and content of your program. Seek after love. Seek after righteousness, humility, truthfulness, mercy, goodness, meekness, and all the godly virtues. That is our duty. Refrain from the quest of material things for they are unprofitable. A woman's first ambition is to secure a good husband that is well read, handsome and well to do. What do they achieve from such qualities? Your beauty affords you nothing. Others feel so satisfied begetting beautiful and handsome children who are intelligent. However, beautiful your wife may be and however beautiful and intelligent your children may be both afford you nothing god would not save you because of your handsome and rich husband or beautiful wife or intelligent children or academic achievement or the wealth that you have amassed what will bring you salvation is love, faith, abiding in peace with one another, in joy, mercy, and all the virtues. Whether this gospel pleases you or not, it is immaterial to me. I have, bought, I have brought you the truth and eternal life. Men are so corrupt and morally bankrupt. Marriage is honorable. First witness, Hebrews 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but were mongers and adulterers 
God will judge. If there is any man who is morally upright as concerning fornication and adultery, let such a person come up for a handsome reward. That you are a professor, a governor, a president, or scientist avails you nothing in so far as you remain a fornicator. Such a person has no life in him. There is nothing to enjoy in that act. Yet it is the same sin God enjoined Adam and Eve never to indulge in. Woman, women have not feared better. The women will deliberately clad themselves in very short and tight skirts and blonde and blouses with their painted lips, fingernails, eyelids, cheeks, and to crown it all with an hairdo that will get many immoral men aroused. Fornication is the order of the day now. Men and women think that they are enjoying life, but I tell you, you are enjoying death. Problems in matrimonial home. That is the source of the problems in the world. Men have since lost the fear of God. Many couples all over the land are at daggers drawn. What can such people obtain from God? There is no matrimonial home that is in peace. People in high places like judges, governors, presidents and others are all morally bankrupt. There is no family today that breathes an air of peace and joy in their matrimony. Yesterday, women were known to be humble. What about men? Are they humble? They are running all over the place chasing after women. Take a cue from Christ. Do you think that there were no women or beautiful ones for that matter during the time of John the Baptist and our Lord Jesus Christ? Or do you think they were not handsome? When Adam had gotten three children, he ran to the house top to free himself from the bondage of intimacy with his wife. It was there the evil one called Adam, but he, knowing his voice, refused to answer. But when God finally called Adam and asked him, what he was doing on his house top. He told him that he was fed up with having carnal knowledge of Eve. God blamed Adam for not disclosing his plight to him for necessary action. Adam immediately indicated his pleasure to have the herd removed from him. The urge is an evil instinct that overwhelms your body. From the time that urge was removed from Adam and Eve, they both lived together and in peace and joy for 930 years. The root of disrespect. It is now common for a man to tell his wife, that he is going for a meeting or traveling to a certain place to do business only to end up in a woman's house next door. Women too are culprits. They easily use their matrimonial homes as springboard for reaching out to other men. The family is thus turned into a battleground Men have lost their respect and manhood to little girls. If you observe how very little girls who talk to and abuse able-bodied and well-placed men, you would not fail to weep. Men have mortgaged 
their peace and good things from God. The children today are worse off as direct sufferers from the corrupt nature of their parents. The iniquities of the parents are visited on the children. So says the scripture. Many have resorted to drinking, smoking, snuffing, and other recreational activities for peace, yet to no avail. The only source of peace and joy and prosperity and all the good things is obedience unto God. Second witness. Romans chapter 1 verses 22 to 32 Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one towards another, Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder debate deceit malignity whispers backbiters haters of god despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, Coven, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. The beautiful and the ugly, the high and the low, the black and the white, the young and the old, are all neck deep in the very act and are guilty of it. This explains why the scriptures say we are conceived in iniquity and born of sin. The children are the products and extension of their parents. Our Lord Jesus Christ saw all the women, very beautiful ones, but held his head above them he learned from the past. This is why the first fool is a proper fool. 
But the second fool is a bloody fool. The iniquities of the parents are visited on the children. Adam found himself in the tango when he requested for a companion. Their companionship ended in adultery. The source of our miseries and woes and theirs too. Christ would not have been so foolish as to fall into the same trap again. It is for that reason Christ sought for no wife or companion. Today he is the King of kings and Lord of lords and the ruler of heaven and earth. I bet you whether there is any family today that has peace. There are accusations and counter accusations of extramarital engagement by couples. Parents are apt to complain how stubborn and disobedient their children are. I challenge you parents, are you any less stubborn or disobedient? There is no way an evil man will bring forth a good person. It is just natural that you will bring forth your replica. It is the iniquities of the parents that are visited on the children. Re-examine the second lesson. Second lesson, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered finally be ye all of one mind having compassion one of another love as brethren be pitiful be courteous not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing but contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Christ is God's true Son. There is no man or woman who has obtained God's blessing. People are busy searching for God, but have not and cannot see Him. Christ alone emerged as the true Son of God. Others were bastards. Fornication is second to no other sin. The moment you defile your body, you lost your right of sonship and membership in the kingdom of God. Whatever men who do to obtain peace and joy outside being obedient to God is momentary and it is null and void. Once you are disobedient and have defiled yourself, even if you surround yourself with the best bodyguards, best physicians, best cooks and live inside a rock, you remain so defenseless and insecure as a worm. At that moment, the Spirit of God departs from you. Men and women were supposed to be brothers and sisters, having only platonic relationship. It is not as if God would not have increased the population of this world without the exercise of mating between man and woman. Our Lord Jesus Christ was conceived without Joseph having carnal knowledge of Mary. One of our sisters from Zaire delivered a baby boy. She conceived through the Holy Spirit. Joseph was not the biological father of Jesus. After all, God knows the, that reproduction via, make, via mating is crooked and ungodly. 
those worthy of God's kingdom. Anyone involved in that very act is defiled and good for nothing. He is in fact dead, alive. Take our witness from Luke chapter 20, verses 35 to 37. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angel and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush, when he called it the Lord, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, you are privileged to hear the above promises, but cannot be beneficiaries of them. Spiritual chorus I am not the God of the dead. I am the God of the living. Those that shall be accounted worthy to inherit the earth and the kingdom of God, neither marry nor are give, given in marriage. The ones that have defiled themselves have no place in the kingdom of God. It is possible to deceive a man, but not God. Whether whatever a man sows, the same shall he reap. The day Adam and Eve offended God through fornication, they were promptly expelled from the Garden of Eden. Women had since lost credibility before God. They have equally lost respect and regard before man and God. It is not uncommon behind the scene for a governor to go on his knees for a little girl. Men have lost the moral courage to hold their heads high. All is nullity. You are all brethren. Your husband or wife is your brother and sister. Live as blood between live as blood brethren in peace, love and equality. Your prayers are unanswered because of your iniquities. No man is bigger or better or more important than a woman. We are all one. Whatever you have is your wife or husband. Anyone who discriminates against his wife and treats her unfairly and unevenly will obtain nothing from God. Girls these days are said to be wayward, insolent and corrupt. I ask who is responsible? Are not men the culprits? It, is it not pathetic to observe elderly men, some of them judges, professors, directors and so forth, Lure little girls with material things to sleep with them? Are uh, you think God will quickly brush over the issue? Re examine the golden text. Golden text, Corinthians chapter 13. Golden text, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 3 to 8. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, 
endure it all things, charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Fornication creates a bridge between man and God. Most girls are today defiled by men old enough to be their grandfathers and that is a grievous offense. Every man should control himself, not leaving himself to passion. Or were our Lord Jesus Christ and John the Baptist not men? There is confusion, there is poverty and great suffering upon men arising from their corrupt tendencies. Anyone who commits fornication or adultery is deserted by God. The kingdom of God is for those who love and obey Him. It is not for liars, for fornicators or adulterers or the disobedient ones. Read Revelation chapter 14 verses 3 to 5. It reads, And they sung as if it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb, and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Who has the above qualification? Take another witness from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29-35. It reads, But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they have none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord, but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that he may attend upon the Lord without destruction. Brethren, a stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. Let those who have ears, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, Father.